always loved film. I, I was one of the boys in the hood that would go and, I don't know if you're aware of it, go and carry the signboard that they write for 6, 30, 30, and go and put it at a particular place so that they can allow me to go and watch a movie. I used to do that and I, I loved drawing a lot. So I've always been attracted to films. Um, um, and I've always loved to act. But it was when I was, I got to senior high that I had opportunity to do that. Um, I joined the drama group and then that's where it all started. Um, I developed the interest from senior high and immediately after that I knew I wanted to do acting. So I took it serious from there. Well, it, it was a humble beginning for me having the opportunity to do stage with the likes of David Dontor and um, Aluta and all of that before I went to school of performing art. So I'd always been an actor, just doing the act. But um, I knew I could always direct. It was something that I had passion for. It was something that all the times I did acting, I was still looking at it. I, I loved the directors. I had, I had opportunity to work with Frank Raja, Pascal Amalfo, and all of that. So it was something that I had much interest in. So each and every time, apart from the acting, I still look at them when they're doing the directing thing. Um, I think it was right after school, I developed the interest for writing. Um, I don't know, I think when I was in school, I was doing a little writing, but I was not that serious as in university. But when I finished, you know, the hassle, you must do something. And I had learned all these things in school, so I decided to start writing for myself because I knew that nobody was going to give me the opportunity to direct their movie. Nobody. So I wanted my story that I think that I have very, I'm very confident about it and then push it to somebody. And that's what I tried doing. And I wanted to direct, so I was looking for somebody to produce. Like, I have a story, can you help me? I can direct. And it went around and around and around until somebody decided to do for Could This Be Love, which is my first directorial debut. <clears throat> and then it, 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 the, the, the energy and the passion continued and, you know. <laughs> this will be so hard for me to choose because I am I'm, I'm a character person. I do believe that every story stands on, apart from, I mean, the plot on characters' shoulders. So I love to write different kinds of characters. Uh, I'm reading a lot. I like Bismarck the Joe's character and in April. I love, but I think if there's anybody that I really want to be, it will be the character in, um, um, in the corner. Romanus, he, he, he has the energy, he has the vibe, he's free, he loves to laugh, he loves to be funny, he's easygoing, you know, he doesn't really take life seriously and he has a, an ambition to become a musician. You know, I always love people that are drawn by their passion and their dreams and he's somebody that I think I would love to be like, but I've written a lot of characters that are so, you know, It's not easy for me to create. It's actually, it comes easy for me to create, but it's not easy because I like to think about what the audience will be thinking. I like to think that, okay, I know if the plot goes like this, they will like it. I'm, I'm, I'm an audience myself. So sometimes I like to swerve what you won't think about. Um, it's actually, interesting for me to create not not like difficult it's interesting i i like to think about the characters what do you think what they have been maybe i might not put that even in the script but i like to build a background for every character so when i'm writing it really takes me a little more time because i want to work with characters i want you to watch my movie and see a b c d all looking different but bringing one goal on board. I don't like to create characters that are almost the same. So it's a little, I wouldn't say easy or difficult, it's interesting for me when I'm, I'm creating these things. I love it. One of the things I like, like I can think of what a character said and I'll just laugh. And people ask me, what is wrong with you? I said, you don't know what I'm talking about. There's a, something I'm writing that this character, I think is, 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 is being funny or is being something. And I know, interestingly, when I finished and people watch the scene, they also laugh like the same way I laughed when I conceived the idea. 
um, if I have an idea, I want to see what the other person thinks about it. So I can ask, um, what do you think about this? Then I want to hear everybody's opinion. Sometimes I have my way I want to go. But you'll be shocked that if you talk to people about some ideas, I don't even make them know that this is what I'm driving at. And they give you good opinion. Some, some fall in line with what you're thinking about, some don't. If it's good, you take it. If it's not good, you take it. But um, I like to think and brood over an idea over and over again before I bring it out, before I make it a script, before. So before I even start a script, I've thought about too many things and how I want it to go. Um, basically, I love to over, like I said, over and over again, think about it and ask people of the ideas and what they think about it. And then when I finish all those research, and then I start putting it into writing. Um, yeah, I stop. I have a lot. It's, it's, it's amazing you ask this question because I have like three scripts I'm writing. Guess what? All of them, I've written half of the script. It's not like I don't know what I want to write. I know what I want to write. I know the story. I know the plot. But before I do a scene, I I think of what the, the, the people will say. I think of dialogue. I think it would just be important. Um, how do I want to begin the scene? Should the character sit down? Should he stand? Should he come from somewhere? I think about all these things before I put up. So I'm always in the in the in the world of the characters, creating it. Amazingly, sometimes when I'm writing, I act this character and I said, okay, if I ask where would you be or uh, what, what is your name? How would the other character have acted it? I want to act it and see which, uh, how it's going to go before I put it down. So uh, when, when, when I'm writing and, or I'm creating something and I, I get stuck, I free my mind. I just go and chill. I just leave it, think about something else and keep brooding over what should be my next. It should be different from whatever, everything I've written before, everything I've done before. You know, I, I, just, I just go away and come back to it when it's the right time. I don't really rush things because I think I've built a brand over the years that anything at United should be very good. So um, it takes me a little more time to put things. But when I'm stuck, free your mind. <laughs> just go chill out. Yes, my toilet. <laughs> yeah, when I'm just in my toilet, I have a ritual I do. Like every morning, I have to be there and play music and be with myself. And and if there's anything at all, I just want to brood over it and all of that. So most of the times, I conceive ideas when I'm early morning, when I'm just with myself, chilling out and just thinking, playing songs and. So I conceive those ideas, then I put them down, then I start working on them and everything. But that's the place I can tell you that I feel so. There's no way I can't go to a, a, a restaurant. No, 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 just in my little washroom. <laughs> well, um, every morning, um, the energy you bring out every morning sparks how your day is going to go like. Um, I mean, I work already, so, you know, before, maybe I had a different schedule before I was working with Xylophone and then now. But now I, I work, so most of my creative things comes in the evenings. I, I, in the evenings that I put over them and then I start putting them down and, and all of that. Yes, sometimes. Sometimes you put um, an idea there and you're thinking maybe the audience is going to get what you're trying to say and sometimes they take it differently. I actually love when I have put out a film and I'm in the audience, I'm in the midst of the audience and we're all watching it. That is the best moment of my life. That is just the best. I want to see their reactions, times they will laugh because they have, like I told you, there are times that I have seen uh, films I've created, I know that, okay, this one, it will make somebody laugh. 
and then so when I, I get a satisfaction when they're laughing, it, that is just the best moment for me. But yeah, sometimes you, you they watch the film and they come, they they, they kind of argue and they kind of go like, no, this is not supposed to happen. I'm like, no, why is he not thinking the way I'm thinking? This is how it's supposed to happen. But like you know, that's the fun of it. When you do something and somebody takes it in a different um, um, way, the way they want to take it. Most of the times, I don't do the film for myself. You know, I think about the audience a lot. They are the one I'm making the film for. So sometimes you satisfy them, sometimes you don't satisfy them. But all in all, it's a, it's a creative work and everybody has an opinion how it should go like. I take criticisms, good positive criticisms in good faith. There are a couple of people that actually don't know what they are saying, but they just want to bring their opinions out. That too, you still take it in good faith and continue. It doesn't change whatever you want to do. But um, I appreciate good, positive, no, I mean positive criticism. It could be a negative on you, it could be positive, but it has to be something constructive. And I, I allow that. I mean, that's the only thing that will make you grow. If, if you always think, like I told you, I don't do the thing for myself, I do it for the audience. So if they are saying, no, 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 it's cool. <laughs> you see my wife, eh? she's like my baby. <laughs> she can worry, like, she can just be all over around you. So if I'm around her, I, I will not have that chance to. Unless I get her into the mood of trying to listen to me, like, babe, what do you think about this? Then she can start saying, I have that way I can create with her. But other than that, I have to be alone because I actually behave funny when I'm creating. I like to act everybody's character. So if you're around me, you think, ah, no, nah, I didn't know Hannah. I, like I said, I can just burst out laughing because I have I have thought of a line a character has said, and I think it's funny, and so I just can't keep it. I just burst out laughing, and sometimes my friends will start asking me, "Where, mini born?" Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is everything alright? Uh, it's funny. So I like to most of the time be alone, and where I can be alone and feel comfortable is my washroom. <laughs> yeah. Besides film. Sometimes I wish I can sing because of my writing ability and I, I, I sometimes wish I can convey my message through music as well, you know. Um, besides that, I think I'm good. I like the drive. I think of organizing people and putting something out there for people to enjoy it. So theater as well, is, I, I practiced that whilst I was in school, but sometimes I really feel like I should be a musician. I should have gotten a good voice. You know, like the Tyrese, like the Jimmy Fox, they can do acting, they can do this, they can do that. I, I can only do everything filmmaking, not anything I, I said. I, I should be able to sing, I should be able to, you know, I'd have, I'd have loved myself because I'm, that's, that's the kind of person I am, very creative, things come through your mind. And I do believe that if I did have the chance of having a good voice by now, you know, I'd take some, some BT. <laughs> I'm proud of every work I have done. Uh, there are times that it's very, it's very um, tough um, for a filmmaker because <clears throat> a distribution channel doesn't work here like that. That is our biggest problem. We create, we don't know where to distribute, we don't know where to sell it. So it's like you create and you keep your thing. You know, you, you, you don't create it for yourself, you create it for people to see it. So it really hurts when that part of the job doesn't really go as it should. Uh, but quitting, then it's like saying, you're shooting yourself off. You don't quit, um, you don't. I mean, you can get tired, you can start crawling, you can start walking, um, relax more, but not quitting. The joy, the joy I give to people when they watch my product. You know, you'll be there and somebody will say, when is Connor coming back? We like the Connor so much. We like, when is season two coming back? Oh, that your movie, I like it. The joy that you bring on people's faces, knowing that, okay, you've really done a good job. You know, uh, people motivate you. People say, I like your work, and you go like, oh, so these people are also watching. You know, things like that motivate me. Uh, and when you conceive a new idea, it motivates me to want to do something uh, crazy, you know. Uh, as for quitting, never, never. Over the years, I keep adding. 
I keep adding and that's one thing I thank God for. Me, when I conceive an idea, I just get too excited about it. Like I want people to see what I have, I have seen. Like the picture I have seen in my eye, I just want people to see it. Everybody who has seen Beautiful Rings actually loves it. Point is, the margin I want to create for my things that I do is the only thing that worries me. Like you don't get the opportunity to, for a lot of people to see what you can do. And, and what you have in you, you know, that's, that's just the, the only problem, the distribution channel I'm talking about. Because Beautiful Reunions, a lot of people have not seen it in Ghana because it's not been released in Ghana. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, that's the only thing that sometimes I'm going like, ah, oh. yeah. But at the end of the day, the product was nice. The people, the audience that I have seen Beautiful Reunions loved it and they know me for it. So I think it's a good thing, very much. You know, like I told you, for me, it is, um, I feel limited when um, you don't have enough resources. I know what I can do. And um, it's always been a learning process for me. So imagine that you have learned something new and you're still using the old tactics to do, to, 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 to do it. It's very difficult. You, you, maybe you know that in this particular scene, we're walking. You, you don't need a handheld shot. You need a DJI Ronnie or something that can, a, a jib, something that can make you smooth. You don't have the resources, and it limits you to want to uh, cut, shortcut, and do something that uh, because you don't have the resources. Um, but we try to create the best out of what we have. Basically, everything I've created, if I have all the resources, I have all the time, I have all the finances. Trust me, it will look too better than what I have. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Yes, um, I've always brought the element of laughter. Even when you watch my films and they are very serious to things we're discussing, you still have that element of that comic element in it. They are parts of. You can't watch a Dinatis film and not have great moment to laugh off something. You will definitely laugh about it, even in difficult situations. You watch Shadow Romance. You watch. I mean, they have gun and everything, and there was something that would provoke laughter. I don't know how it comes, but I think that is something amazing and unique about, about my films. There's always, it may not be a comedy, may, but there's always moments that you laugh over it. There are always moments that you, you, you'll be silent about it. It might be, yeah, it might be, yeah. I believe in the right time, um, yes, because like I told you, the opportunities I had when I started my directing are not the same opportunities I have now. And I do believe that um, in the near future to come, the opportunities I will have will look very different. That way, I will now be able to share most of the things that uh, pay resources, pay financial, uh, you're not able to do. If my creative works will have an order, um, will smell something um, like oud. Do you know oud? Like perfume oud. Like if you know oud, you know. Like the people will talk, if you know, you know. Oud, you know. Oud, like that, you know, it's something that, go and search for oud, like uh, perfume, yeah. You know, there are a lot of things to talk about. There are too many things to talk about. Some I, um, this film, this film that is showing, it talks about um, 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 mob injustice. You know, I, do, I, I write about a lot of things. So, um, mob injustice. Look at what happened to our, our, our soldier in, in one of the villages that he went. There are times people just ask you, or you hear somebody saying, Julo, 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 oh, thief, 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 thief then everybody wants to go beat the person. But they don't have no idea if the person is truly a thief or something like that. I do, I think I do social movies, things that will correct social biases. And, and especially for the youth. My concentration was on the as you believe that the youth is the future. Uh, it's the youth that we need to pay more attention to because they will take the mantle and, and develop the country everywhere at all. So if the youth are, I mean, conscious of the things that they have to do, it will be a better place for all of us. Because um, it's me and you that will become president tomorrow. It's me and you that will own the positions and the big companies tomorrow. So if our mindset 
is of a positive one, it's of a good direction. Tomorrow, our children will enjoy consistency. Whatever you decide to do, practice it every day. You'll be good at it. You'll be better at it every day of your life when you practice it. It will become part of you. If you're a footballer, you practice every day. You obviously become better. So whatever you, the 12 year old boy, you have decided to do, just make sure that you practice it, you know it, you learn everything about it. That's the only thing that's going to make you better.